Hello everyone. Today's video topic is stop nagging your horse. So let me know in the comments if you're guilty of nagging your horse. I think we all are. I know that I am. Sometimes I'm riding around and suddenly I'm like, gosh, like why am I kicking every stride? Why am I clucking all the time? Why am I hitting my horse with the whip? So it's really easy to get lulled into this habit of supporting your horse all the time with your leg. And it becomes a big problem because then your horse becomes accustomed to you like kicking every stride and then you have to kick even harder. And then, you know, what's gonna happen when you need to ride a line of one tempies or a half pass or something more complicated. So the way that I think about it is if you have cruise control in your car, that's how you want your horse to be. You wanna be able to set your horse at a certain speed like say you wanna set them at a four mile per hour trot and they should stay at that trot until you either hit the brakes or the gas pedal. So have that image in your mind of cruise control in your car. And I'll show you how we're going to work on this. So we are going to start off first at the trot. Um, and the first step is to get your horse going the speed that you want them to go. So. I'm just going to pick up a trot here, oh boy, and I'm going to just decide, okay, this is a trot that I like, and my heels are down, my legs are long, hang on, I need to fix my girth, otherwise it looks not good. I am not the most detail-oriented person, or the neatest person, so I need to work on being neater and more detail oriented. All right, we've got our straps tucked in, both sides. All right, so back to cruise control. So, picking up the trot, and this is a good trot. So I feel like, all right, I like this trot, but I don't wanna have to nag for it. So right there, he tried to slow down from say four to three and a half miles an hour. And what's really important is that when your horse slows down, so like here, he goes slower, my correction is he has to go even faster. So it, there has to be a consequence. It's not enough to just speed him up to what he was doing before. If he slows down, and it seems like the center line about here is where he always slows down, he needs to go even faster, good boy, so that there's a consequence. And then let me see if I can get past the center line this time without him slowing down. Good boy, good boy, that was better, good boy. So basically the technique is get your horse going the speed you want, take your driving aids away. The second your horse slows down, you have to speed them up even more. And if he were to canter off, like if I want trot and he slows down, I make him go and he canters, I'm gonna pet him. I'm not gonna stop him because he, he went forward, which is what I wanted. And if you slow down, if you right away bring him back and punish him for cantering, then you're being too picky. So it's important to kind of know um, that if your horse makes a mistake and goes too forward and canters, you wanna reward that, let them canter maybe half a circle and then bring them back again to the trot. So here, I'm really just feeling the rhythm like a metronome, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. My heels are down. I am not supporting him. I will not support you. I will not support you. Good boy. I will not support you. No, and there he started trying to slow down. So you saw how I really sped him up to like a lengthening trot. And now gradually, I'm gonna go back to the trot that I wanted. There, good, good boy. I'm not supporting him though. And then this horse, you know, there's kind of places where he just decides like there, no boy like there all of a sudden he just decides okay i'm stopping now but you saw how quick i was to come in with my leg and he cantered off 
which I didn't want canner, but you saw how quick my reaction was. Good boy, good boy. So that's really important too, is that the instant your horse slows down, you've got to correct them. Don't wait, correct them quickly and consequently. And then the, the concept of this cruise control is going to be installed in your horse. And the same thing at the canner. So same thing at the canner. So I'm just going to find the canner that I want. My heels, no. And you see there, I took my leg off and he was like, oh, stop. So that tells me that he's not in front of my leg. So getting this cruise control installed is really the essence of getting your horse in front of the leg. I need to be able to have my heels down, have my leg off, and he needs to just stay cantering the same. And this horse is tricky because there's like certain, like there, there are certain places in the arena, or if I take too much in the contact, he just thinks, oh, now I'm gonna break, now I'm gonna stop. Good boy. And when you're working on this, you know, if you've gotten in a bad habit of nagging your horse, it's going to be a process to get your horse to be a self-going horse. Like you want your horse to just go on their own. But if they've gotten used to you nagging them, it's going to be a process getting them to where they'll just go on their own. Boy. And again, I make an aid, I get the canner that I want, and then I just really try to push my heels down, keep my legs long, and say, I am not going to nag. Good boy. Not going to nag. Good boy. Good boy. No. Good boy. And there, you know, I'm super quick. The second that he quits, I say, no, get back up to speed. He has to go faster if he just decides he's gonna quit me. Boy, until I can just sit here with my legs long and my heels down and the horse carries me around the arena until I tell him that he should stop. Good boy. Good boy. So the other thing that's super important is the independence of your aids. And I'm sure that you saw when I come with my leg, like when he slows down and I come with my leg, my upper body stays the same. So a kick is from your waist down and it's really important that your hands stay here and you don't lean forward and you can't pull because if you pull and kick, then it, it's contradictory aids and your horse isn't gonna go forward. So keep that in mind that you really have to have an independent seat and leg so that when you come with your leg, your hands stay forward and you don't at all um, disrupt the contact or the connection when you're trying to get your horse going. So I hope this video was helpful and let me know in the comments. Like I said, we all get in the habit of nagging our horses, but it's important to think about this. And the less that you can do, you don't want to use supporting aids, you just want to use reminding aids. The less that you can do, the more that allows your horse to hear your aid when you ask for something. So when you ask for a transition or when you ask for a flying change or a half pass, the less you're doing before the aid, the more able your horse is to react and hear what you're asking them. So give me a thumbs up, be sure to subscribe to my channel, and I hope you like this video. The end.